let's go on with Davidson's own theory. So the semantic system will produce meaning specifying theorems in this form with uh, an addition that there must be something in between these two. S stands for the structural description of a sentence whose meaning we are interested in and P is its meaning. So there must be some operator in between these two. That operator cannot be means that or refers to or means as we discussed in the first section. Instead, there must be something else. And uh, Davidson predicates as structural, uh, I mean the structural description with this predicate T. There also we have this logical connective by conditionality. So, in this way, he links this sentence, structural description of this sentence, to its meaning. S is T if and only if P, or structural description of snow is white is T if and only if P, or you may say, if this is a heterophonic theory, structural description of Carbeazer is T if and only if P. But uh, we need something for this T. The best candidate for T is, for Davidson, is this predicate, is true. S is true if and only if P. So snow is white is true if and only if snow is white. Or Carbeazer is true if and only if snow is white. So, in Davidson's approach, we understand meaning to truth. So, we use truth, the concept of truth, to understand meaning. As you see in this meaning specifying theorem, there is no mention of meaning. Rather, we have snow is white is true if and only if snow is white. So, this general schema is called convention T. Davidson borrows this notion from Alfred Tarski. Alfred Tarski is a mathematician and a logician. He is not really interested in the semantics of natural languages. Rather, he is interested in a formal definition of truth in artificial languages, like logic or a programming language. You can uh, check uh, his notion of truth in these articles the concept of truth in formalized languages and the semantic conception of truth. In Tarski's definition of truth, there is this, uh, this distinction, object language, meta language distinction. There is this hierarchy, which is very important because truth is defined for sentences in object language, but it is, def it is not defined in the object language. It is defined, I mean, it cannot be defined in the object language. That would lead to some paradoxes. Instead, it is defined in a meta language. If you are interested in the truth of any sentence in the meta language, then you need a meta meta language. So there we have this hierarchy. Since we do not have this hierarchy in natural languages, for Tarski, Truth is not defined for natural languages or cannot be defined for natural languages like English, Turkish, German. That's important because Davidson borrows this notion, this uh, semantic conception of truth, convention T from David Tarski. But Tarski says you cannot define truth for natural languages. That's an important problem because the aim of Davidson is to understand meaning in natural languages. And in order to understand meaning in natural languages, he appeals to notion of truth. So truth in natural languages uh, is what Davidson uses to understand meaning. But Tarski says you cannot define truth for natural languages. The uh, distinction can be justified on the grounds that one theory is formal, 
not empirical, but the other one is also an empirical theory. There is the formal part of this theory, but it is also empirical. So we derive these meaning specifying theorems on the basis of empirical grounds. That's the important dis distinction between these two. And that justifies this problem that we just mentioned. Or that justifies the, this strange point. So Davidson's theory, theory is an empirical one. Meaning specifying theorems are generated from the system. System generates these meaning specifying theorems on the empirical grounds. Snow is white is true if and only if snow is white is a meaning specifying theorem. But this one, snow is white is true if and only if grass is green is not. And this shows that uh, or it can be justified on this empirical grounds. Davidson says in cases where we are unsure of the truth of a sentence, we can have a confidence in a characterization of truth predicate only if it pairs that sentence with one we have good reasons to believe equivalent. So if we are unsure of the truth of a sentence, then we can we have confidence. That's the empirical, that's the uh, empirical part of Davidson's theory. Our beliefs matters in Davidson's theory, matter in Davidson's theory. He also says omniscience can obviously afford more bizarre theories of meaning than ignorance. But then omniscience has less need of communication. So communication, ignorance, our beliefs are important in understanding or in generating these theorems. Another empirical uh, point is the radical translation. In radical translation, we construct a theory of meaning for the speaker of another language. And suppose that another language is a language you know nothing about. So, but you are trying to construct a theory of meaning for that language. You do not have any dictionary. And how would you do that? How would you come up with meaning specifying theorems for that language and infinite correlation of sentences alike in truth? To do it, uh, for Davidson, we need to use this charity principle. We need to assume that those people, users of that language, saying the truth. So he says, maximize agreement or risk not making sense of what the alien is talking about. Maximize the self-consistency we attribute to him on pain of not understanding him. So this part is important. Maximize self-consistency we attribute to him. So then there is this meaning-belief relation that we use in, in, in ordinary communication as well. But in this radical translation case, it is uh, way more important meaning-belief relation. Because in that case, we do not know what someone means unless we know what he believes. We need to know what he believes in order to understand what he means. But in order to understand, in order to know, I mean, we do not know, uh, in order to uh, know what he believes, or in, with Davidson's words, we do not know what someone believes unless, unless we know what he means. So there is a circularity here between belief and meaning. Which one comes first? Radical translation here, or uh, this is actually Quine's point, uh, or uh, this can be uh, uh, roots can be found in Quine's work. But Davidson adds that we are able to break into this circle if only incompletely. Because we can sometimes tell that a person accedes to a sentence we do not understand. 